everybody, welcome to Fastware. Today's topic is CPU caching, and we're going to be looking how caches affect performance. Every time when conversation goes to performance, one person, at least in the group, will bring up, oh, so it's cache misses or something like that. Today, we'll try to understand why CPU caching is so crucial and why everybody keeps talking about it. So a standard CPU, not the most recent i9s or thread rippers from AMD, but a standard i5 core CPU currently has about four cores. So each core has an associated L1 cache, which is usually about 64 kilobytes in size. However, that is not all data cache. L1 is separated into 32 kilobytes of iCache, which is an instruction cache, and 32 kilobytes of dcache, which is data cache. Then two cores usually share the L2 cache, which can be quite big, up to eight megabytes in size. And then all four cores share the L3 cache. However, not all caches are made equal. Some caches provide faster access than others. So the L1 cache takes about three cycles to return data. That's true for either iCache or dcache. It takes about 20 cycles to retrieve information from L2 cache. So if the core requests the data and it's not found in L1, it will then travel to L2, try to find it there. And that process takes about 20 cycles. Then if the data is not found in L2, we'll go to L3 cache and that takes about 60 cycles. And then if the data is not found in L3 cache, you will be going straight to RAM. And then we're talking about 200 cycles. So you see that L1 cache is about two orders of magnitude faster than RAM and L2 about an order of magnitude. So to illustrate this visually, we can look at the battle of a bridge. So the L1 cache is pretty fast. The L2 takes a little bit longer, but then when you try to access data from RAM, it takes forever. You just keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Go make yourself a cup of tea in the process. So before we continue, I would like to recap the CPU data pipeline where you have data cache on the top and you have a iCache instruction cache on the bottom. The instructions are loaded from instruction cache into the CPU, which addresses some memory and then we request data from the dcache. However, in the object-oriented model, your objects might be large. This one is 192 bytes. These large objects don't fit in a single cache length, which is usually a 64 bytes in size. So you can have very few of these large objects in the little L1 cache. A better way to organize your data would be to Put only the data that you require for this operation together. Put the same member from every single object in a single array, which is a structure of arrays approach. Then the data will be much easier to access for the CPU and just burn through as fast as it can. Now we looked at a little bit of theory as usual. Now we want to look at the specific example four different examples from L1, L2, L3, and RAM. And each will be accumulating a single integer in that object. In L2 example, our small object consists of 10 integers. In L3, it's 48, and then RAM is 120. But we only accumulate one of them. So this perfectly simulates a situation which you have in the object oriented programming model where you have many members, but for a specific operations, you only using small part of these members to compute the result. In our benchmark, we have problem at different scales from 64 integers to 65,536 integers. As you can see, the L1 does pretty good on a largest problem space, takes about five and a half microseconds. L2 struggles a little bit more. You remember that you have 10 integers. 
two, but you're accessing only one. And that takes 73 microseconds. Then for L3, it takes 171 microseconds. And then RAM, almost half a millisecond. I think we know that we want to keep our data in L1 cache as close to CPU as it is the fastest to access. And then performance deteriorates very fast when you're actually uh, trying to access L2, L3, and then main RAM. I have plotted this data on a logarithmic scale graph and you can see the scaling for each of these cases. RAM, as you can see the green line, takes, as I said, half a millisecond to perform on the larger scales. The L3 does a little bit better, L2 still a little better. And there is a massive gap when all your data is able to fit in the L1 cache. The performance is just so much better. To illustrate this further, I compiled graphs for L1, L2 and L3 caches where we compare expected performance improvements versus actual performance improvements. Here we see that the red line illustrates the speed up expected between access to the main RAM and L1 cache. It's about 66 times. So the results are within the order of magnitude. Next, we have the L2 cache where the expected speed up is about 10 times RAM versus L2. And L2 cache is also within the order of magnitude where it's supposed to be. And last, it's the L3 access. The expected improvement access L3 versus main RAM, it's about three and a half times, it's a bit less, 3.3. And in actuality, we're getting around that time, again, within the order of magnitude. So remember, keep your data small, separate each operation in its own vector, and keep it distinct. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, press that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.